Hey guys, so welcome to my tutorial on setting up Cinema Machine uh, to work with the uh, Invectors third person camera system. So, this has been something I wanted to do for quite a while since I made the Cinema Machine 1.5 integration, uh, which no longer works because uh, Unity went ahead and revamped the whole system and it's not supported in Unity 2018. And since Unity 2018 wasn't exactly a very stable platform at the time, uh, I did not pursue this integration. But now that Unity 2018 is quite stable in its 2018.1.1 version that I'm using in this demo, uh, we can do something quite nice with the uh, Cinemachine and Timeline. Okay, so what I'm going to show you will be a simple uh, simple scene where this player would walk up to this signpost and then the camera would cut into a simple uh, uh, cinematic where the camera will just go through and uh, look at these rhinos who are uh, patrolling this area. Alright, so it's going to be uh, something very simple but we need to do some pre-setup to uh, make the third person camera drive side by side with the Invector camera, uh, with the uh, Cine Machine cameras. So what you first need to do is to uh, find your third person camera object and parent it under a different object. So we'll call it uh, the Cine Machine rig, nest the third person camera object under it scroll down so you can see that uh, the third person camera comes with the uh, third person camera script and also its camera states so in case you guys do know what uh, these camera uh, states do they are what drive uh, the camera around when you crouch stand and do all sorts of things so your entry into this camera state uh, will be the default state and when you crouch, the state changes to crouch. You can see the field of view of the camera decreasing and things like that. All right. So we, what we need to get Cinemachine into this system is to first add a Cinemachine brain uh, in the same script where you have the V third person camera and also add a Cinemachine virtual camera. And this is the camera that should have the highest priority in the game. So I will set the priority. I will leave the default priority to be there. So that is 10. Uh, I will also make sure that whatever values that I have here correspond to the virtual camera that we have created here because everything needs to be the same because we will drive this using Cine Machine. So we need to update the field of view in the camera to 60 so that is what we have here so if we play now you will see that uh, nothing has changed which is a good thing which is what needs to happen all right so next we need to create our cinematic so before we create all of this what i should have mentioned earlier is that you needed to download Cine Machine from the asset store so i'm using uh, Unity 2018 1.1. Uh, the package that Cine Machine has for Unity 2001 .1 is not exactly a completely updated version, but it uh, is good enough for us to uh, work with uh, for this demo. So, what I'm trying to do now is to simply set up the cinematic, and I like to usually set up my cinematics in a uh, different areas. So I will create a new game object and and I will simply uh, name it as cinematics. So I will create an, a nested game object called entry cinematic rhino area. All right. So under this, I will create a couple of uh, game objects. So the first thing would be uh, the cinematic trigger and the other game object would be the cinematic camera and the other one would be 
the cinematic uh, playable. So we are using the playable API as well, which comes with Cinemachine. So before we do what we do with the trigger, let's uh, set up uh, our playable and the virtual cameras first. So let's click on the cinematic camera and let's add a Cinemachine virtual camera to uh, this game object. So uh, I'm going to set the priority of this camera to zero because uh, I do not want to make this camera uh, the default camera by bypassing, by having the same priority as what we use for the third person camera. All right, and next let's uh, position this camera uh, somewhere we need to, we can uh, see what happens. So to be able to see what the camera shows you, uh, for the time being, it's better to set a higher priority for this camera. So I have set the priority as 20. So let's take a look at our camera. So it's currently underground, hiding somewhere. Let's just pull it up, uh, bring it somewhere we can actually position it properly. So, right, I think we are getting somewhere. Okay. All right, this looks better. Okay, sorry about taking my good time for that. All right, so next, uh, since we have set up the camera, what we need to do next is to create the actual timeline object. So first you need to add a playable director component to this script. Uh, and we take off this play on awake uh, option because every, uh, what would happen is as soon as you enter the scene it would otherwise play the cinematic. Uh, all right so let's go ahead and create ourselves a new uh, cinematic. So once you are in this object and you have created a playable director you need to go to window and click timeline so that it displays the timeline window. Uh, once you have it you need to click create and uh, you need to save your playables as a scriptable object. So let's make it a uh, Rhino sequence and save it. So what happens is it will create um, a new prefab uh, and uh, save it in a scriptable object. So once that uh, scriptable object is created, uh, you will notice that it will have an animation track by default. So let's go back to the playable. And uh, I don't need this animation track to be there. So I'm just setting that to none. And what I really need uh, this to have, uh, need this to contain is a Cinemachine track. And and animation track for my virtual camera. So when you create a Cinemachine track, it needs to have a Cinemachine brain. So we need to select the corresponding Cinemachine brain that we created earlier in our scene, which is in the third person camera. So once we have that, uh, we need to go and add a Cinemachine short clip. All right. So every Cinemachine short clip will require uh, a, cin a Cinemachine virtual camera. So we need to click on the Cinemachine shot, drag and drop our cinematic camera uh, into the Cinemachine shot. So you can set up uh, certain properties of this uh, cinematic camera should you wish. Uh, so I'm just going to set up a field of view of 60 uh, as I did before. Mm, all right, so the next thing is for me to uh, create some sort of cinematic. So what I will do is create a simple cinematic. What I will be doing is I will simply move this camera along uh, this axis so that it kind of pans forward towards the rhinos. So how I do this is by uh, 
dragging and dropping the Cinemachine camera onto this animation track. Uh, so it will ask me uh, if I should create an animator on the cinematic camera. So I will go ahead and create it. So once you are done with that, uh, uh, I will start to need recording uh, values. So initially, uh, if you need to uh, record values, you need to click on this uh, red button here. So now we are in recording mode. So at the start of uh, this recording, I would like the Cinemachine camera to stay where it is currently. So I will just slightly change one of these values just so that uh, um, it's going to uh, stay there. And at the end of the video, I would like the camera to be um, moved slightly forward. like that and I will stop there so to stop the recording you need to click on the record button again uh, so you can see your cinematic uh, when you play this right? right we can actually reduce the length of this shot so let's uh, bring it to 240 seconds so if you still uh, play you can see that the camera will simply keep on panning like that uh, I will bring, I will let uh, these values also uh, change by uh, moving the camera forward a little bit more, somewhere around here, and uh, saving it. Alright, so we are good there. So we have to stop recording again and uh, our animation uh, is not going to be this long so I will uh, make a change to the playable director uh, to fix that. So what I need to do is um, select the playable, double click on the playable asset, uh, go to the asset, just click on it and then uh, change the duration mode to fixed length and I will set uh, either the number of frames or the number of seconds. So I'm running this video at a rate of 60 frames per second. So there are 240 frames. So that counts to 240 divided by 60. That gives you four seconds. All right. So now that you have done that, what you need to do is to simply uh, create the trigger now. Because without a trigger, you will not uh, uh, actually trigger this cinematic. All right, so how you do that is by uh, creating a custom script. Um, so I have already created this uh, custom script uh, uh, based on something uh, that is already there uh, from the Unity's uh, 3D game kit. It's a really good asset, so I hope you guys check it out. There's a lot to learn there. Uh, so I can't add this timeline trigger zone script without actually creating uh, a type of collider. So I will first create a box collider uh, because I like box colliders to bring my triggers. So once I set this to trigger, I will change the layer of uh, this trigger to triggers and I will bring this collider to somewhere I can properly use it. So let's bring it uh, somewhere here. Actually, somewhere here would be good, uh, next to the signboard. All right. And I will increase the size of this collider. Because uh, we need uh, because we need the player to uh, trigger this cinematic whenever he approaches from any of these angles. All right, so now that you are done with that, we need to add the timeline trigger zone script. So what this script basically does is to uh, simply trigger uh, some sort of event uh, on the uh, playable director whenever you uh, enter this trigger. So let's take a look at this script. So. Uh, 
uh, it's a very simple script so all it has is a um, simple timeline trigger class uh, timeline trigger zone uh, class inheriting mono behavior it requires a component of type collider and it has an enum indicating the kind of this trigger so this trigger can be either executed once or executed every time the player walks into it um, so if you choose once uh, you will only uh, enter this uh, uh, you will only uh, play whatever this uh, playable uh, does once and if you choose every time it will always trigger the cinematic yeah so you can take a look at this code and uh, copy it uh, and create this script all right so once you have done that uh, let's uh, go and set up the things that are in the uh, timeline trigger zone script so what we need is a triggering game object so the triggering game object would be our player so i will drag the third person melee uh, prefab into the triggering game object and then i will drag and drop the cinematic playable game object that we created into the director slot and the next things i would do uh, are the most important things and that is whenever i start to play the director uh, i need to set the priority of the cinema machine camera uh, to something really high so that it takes priority over all other cameras in the scene okay so let's set the priority of this camera to uh, 10 and at the end of at the end of this execution i would like this cinema machine camera's priority to go back to zero all right and also during the cinematic i would like my player to not move so we need to use the uh, so i'm using a melee uh, controller so i need to go to the melee combat input and choose the lock camera input uh, lock lock melee input uh, method and set it to true and at the end of at the end of the cinematic i need to get back my uh, ability to move the player around so we go back we drag and drop the third person melee controller into a new event we go to the melee combat input and select again the set lock melee input and just leave this checkbox blank because we need to uh, unlock it all right so now everything is ready uh, we need to go and switch back the priority of this camera to zero because if you don't it the camera will just uh, take over your main camera all right so everything is fine let's uh, let's run this and see how it works all right let's play okay so i need to drag my game window a bit so we can see actually i will just maximize the view all right so our camera is working as normal uh, we are using the camera states from the uh, third person controller but this entire setup is currently running on cinema machine all right so that is what we can do with this integration so you can create wonderful cinematics uh, and trigger them based on certain events so uh, i hope you guys enjoyed this uh, we can try and do more things uh, in this series uh, let's see how these things go so i will just show you how this works again all right guys enjoy and if you have more questions about uh, integrating cinema machine with invector you can reach out to me on the invector forums uh, i also have my rpg pack there so you can ask me questions there too all right so see you guys soon bye bye